Hey there everyone, this is Samuel Johnson and welcome back to the Zhao Lin Perspectives. And today we're going to be discussing episode 10 of Zhao Lin Showdown, Big as Texas. And with a name like that, you can probably tell this is a clay-focused episode. And, well, in this episode we meet his dad. We call him Papa Bailey because that, that's kind of the closest thing we get to a name for him in this episode. And part of the reason why he's a coming, why we meet him is because he's going to the, he's come to the Zhao Lin Temple because he wants to check on his son. At a rather unfortunate time because he catches his son as he's trying to wring Raimundo's neck because Raimundo and Omi filled Clay's hat with milk. Well... It was Raymundo's idea, only it was just an unwitting pawn. The point is, not really a good time, and ultimately not really in the right mood. Because the thing is, Clay's dad ultimately agreed to send him to the Xiaolin Temple because, well, he wanted to teach Clay how to be a man's man, and, uh, well, he's not. What he's seeing in the temple isn't really corroborating what he wanted to see. As again, the Xiaolin way of training is about about peace, understanding, and meditation. With some fighting thrown in. And so, ultimately, he admits to Clay that he's considering taking him out. And while Clay objects, especially since the monks in training are searching for the Shen Gong Wu, well, Papa Bailey's able to shoot Clay's objections down by saying, so all this is more important than listening to your daddy, which does cause Clay to quiet up. However, the conversation is put on hold as Dojo comes running, comes running up with the ancient scroll of the Shen Gong Wu, letting everyone know that a new Shen Gong Wu has revealed itself. In this case, an orb called the Orb of Tornami, which is supposed to be able to unleash a whole torrent of water upon any that the orb is used on. However, as Dojo is telling everyone about the Shen Gong Wu, he makes note of something on Papa Bailey's well, neck, specifically a little star bolo. It's a little star bolo that he has, and apparently this is a family heirloom in the base. Bailey family called the Lone Star of Texas. It's something that that's been, that the Baileys found when they first founded their land when they first founded their land back in the 1800s, and it's been passed along along from father to son and so forth. And it's supposed to be passed down to Clay once he once once Papa Bailey believes that Clay has earned it. However, with, however, that's kind of put aside as Clay thinks that the op that the Orb of Tornami revealing itself is a perfect opportunity to show his dad exactly what the Jalen monks are doing, and that if he sees them in action, he might reconsider taking Clay away. As such, Clay's dad agrees to that, and he, the Jalen monks, and Dojo go off to India in order to find the Orb of Tornami. Unfortunately, though, Jack Spicer made it there first and laid claim to the Shen Gong Wu. However, Omi thinks that if the uh, that the Shadow Monk can sneak up on Jack, they might be able to still lay claim to the orb itself, and without minimal without any minimal problem. Unfortunately, Papa Bailey is a man of actions, not words, and so rather than wanting to make a plan to sneak up on Jack, he just orders Clay to go in there and just get the Shen Gong Wu, which Clay dutifully obeys as he comes out of their as he comes out of the Shadow Monk's hiding spot and just tackles Jack, causing him to drop the Shen Gong Wu. Unfortunately, while Jack is distracted by Clay, well, Jack didn't come alone. After all, he's got his Jackbots on standby. Sorry. And as such, while the other Shaolin monks try to make a grab for the orb, well, the Jackbots manage to grab it first and wa and ultimately re deliver it back to Jack. And while ja and while Papa Bailey does once again order Clay to attack to just tackle Jack and get the orb, well, Jack uses the orb to pretty much drown the Shaolin monks in torrents of water before just flying away with his spoils. As such, with the as such with the Jacks having gotten away with the with the MacGuffin this episode, well, Papa Bailey is not really impressed, and if anything, he thinks that this outing has more than proven his point that clay really isn't a man and so he orders clay that he should say goodbye to his friends because he's coming back home to texas with him and ultimately he'll never see the Shaolin temple again much to everyone's disappointment as such from there the episode cuts to later as clay is already left and back and back in texas while the other Shaolin monks are kind of miss are, are well, missing him and all of his little and all of his little anachronisms and well, not really anachronisms his quirks and all that stuff but however However, Dojo can't get his his mind off of the Lone Star of Texas that Papa Bailey wore, as he thinks it's a little stand, as it does kind of ring a few bells. And well, it finally the, the the bells in Dojo's head finally ring the right tune, as he finally realizes why he's so hung up on the star. It's a Shen Gong Wu. Specifically, it's a, it's a Shen Gong Wu called the Star Anabi. Now, while they don't say or show what the Star Anabi does, basically. It's a fire Shen Gong Wu. Basically, just as the Orb of Tornami can unleash a torrent of water upon anyone, the Star Anabi has the power to shoot fireballs, and if you use it correctly, is able. You're able you can read it in flame and then throw it at someone as if it was a, a literal flaming kunai. And um, for, however, the reason, however, 
despite it being a Shen Gong Wu, Dojo could not sense it. And that's because the Star Nabi is still dormant. It hasn't been activated yet. And so right now, the, right now, to the greater world, it's just an, it's just a little neck decoration the, the Bailey family utilizes. And so, and however, at some point, they don't know when, the Star Nabi will reveal itself. And when it does, it'll make Papa Bailey and possibly his entire family targets. And as such, the Jali monks realize they need to get the star Nabi away from him before that happens. And so, Omi, Raimundo, and Kimiko ride Dojo all the way to Texas in order to warn Papa Bailey about it. Unfortunately, though, he doesn't totally believe the story. While he does give them some leeway because Clay claims that they're not, that they're not, that they wouldn't lie about something like this, again, the Star Nabi, or as they call it, the Lone Star of Texas, has been in the family for generations, and he's not just going to get handed up just because a bunch of strangers in pajamas tell him that this thing is a, is a powerful what sense. As such, he, as such, he tells them that if they really want the Star Nabi, then they need to do some work around the ranch and earn it, much like Clay's supposed to earn it. And as such, and as such, he tells them at the crack of dawn they can go help Clay cattle rustle. Me however, Omi will not be joining them, as well he has his own personal mission in this episode, for at the beginning of said episode of this episode, when he and Raimundo were filling Clay's hat with milk, well <laughs> Raimundo mentioned how milk comes from cows, and well, Omi's surprised by this because apparently the Jalan Temple gets their milk from goats. So he wants his chance to milk a cow. And so now on a ranch, he thinks he's got his opportunity, and the, while the ranch is, uh, and while this ranch is a cattle ranch, there is one milking cow on board. So they go send Omi to go milk that cow. In this case, her name is Old Bessie, and Omi is not successful. He just keeps getting, in fact, Bessie apparently has a pair of legs to her because she can send Omi flying for miles. Don't ask me how. Ultimately, though, ultimately, the other Jalen monks the next day help Clay try and cattle rustle, and while they're mostly successful, sans Omi... Well, it's too little too late, as while they're away, the star Nabi reveals itself, and Dojo comes to tell the Jalen monks that they need to get back ASAP. Unfortunately, they arrive back at the Bailey Ranch too little too late, as Jack, Spicer, and Wuya have men have arrived, and they are pretty much just telling Papa Bailey to hand over the star Nabi, with Papa Bailey telling them to go screw themselves. Unfortunately, again for him, Jack brought his robots, and so they just hold they just hold Papa Bailey in place, grab the star, and to try and, add, and try and add one final screw you. Jack once again pulls out the orb of Tornami and then uses it to quite literally flood the entire ranch. And this isn't just he douses everything in water. No, it's a full blown fucking flood. Like the entire valley gets filled up as if it was a bowl, if, as if it was a bowl under a sink. And it and as such, everyone's just trying to get to higher ground, Clay is able to help his dad by getting on top of a barn, Omi tries saving old Bessie, pretty, and ultimately the other Jalen monks are trying to fend off Jack's robots. However, Clay manages to get a bit of an upper hand as he manages to use a lasso to get the star Nabi out of Jack's hands, which caused, causing him to drop it into the, into the water below. As such, Clay and Jack end up diving under to try and get the star, and well, both grab it at the same time, so Jalen showdown time. With Clay, with Clay being able to issue the challenge this time, because well, Jack and him couldn't actually challenge the other each other to a Jalen showdown under the water, because neither could understand one another. So they kind of had to go up up top, and Clay came up first. In this case, the Jalen showdown is a, is a game of is a game of needle in the haystack, with the star Nobby acting as the needle. Basically, Clay will throw the star Nobby into uh, into the into their barn and into a random pile of hay, and whoever can find the star Nobby first will be declared the winner. With Jack wagering the sword of the storms, while Clay wagers the serpent's tail. As such, while Jack is a little reluctant to participate in this because he thinks it's all kind of stupid, he does agree because well he wants a Shen Young Wu, so Jalen showdown time. And while in the tra while the transition from real world to Shaolin Shodan isn't as flashy as other ones, it's still a pretty creative setup. As now the entire barn is now floating in the sky. The barn that the bar the ba the barn that the ba the bale of hay was in is now resting on a giant bale of hay just floating in the sky, and there are just little fence posts on clouds and everything. With Clay's dad. Well, he's a little shocked by the change, but not as shocked as you think he would be. Either way, the Either way, though, as 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 harnesses come up for J for Jack and Clay to ride on to ride on with a with a declaration of Gong Yi Tung Pai, they immediately rush into the challenge as they try flying through the ba the the bale of hay to try and find the star. Unfortunately, though. It's again a task easier said than done, especially since Clay's dad likes to backseat tell likes to backseat 
showdown for his son as he as Clay's trying to do this whole thing and from the silence it's like oh star at the bottom star at the bottom someone get him a pitchfork he needs a pitchfork you're doing it wrong Clay and basically it's just getting more and more on Clay's nerves especially since he does end up using the serpent's tail to try and get an easier job at flying around the haystack and he does almost find the star but Jack is able to use the sword of storms in order to throw in order to throw the hay all over the place causing Clay to fly one way and the star Nobby to fly another now such as Clay tries from getting getting back on his mountain doing everything right and tries getting everything in order once again his, his dad is just telling him he has to do things this way that way and it's at this point that Clay finally just is fed up with his dad and tells him that while he loves him he needs to just sit back and let Clay do things his way which does seem to cause Papa Bailey to shut up and so ultimate and so Clay is able to rush in and it Clay is able to rush in, and while Jack almost gets the star Nobby, thankfully Clay is able to is able to throw a lasso at him, pull him away, throw him into the barn, and it allows Clay to run, to fly in and grab the 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 Shen Gong Wu, and thus he's declared the winner, winning both the star Nobby and Jack Sword of the Storm. So yep, ever, so yeah, victory all around. However, despite having laid claim to the star he still gives it back to his father as he still believes that it's still that it's rightfully in Papa Bailey's and that if Clay wants to have it then he needs to earn it but Papa Bailey does give it back to Clay telling him that he thinks that Clay's more than earned it and he's probably been worthy of this thing for a while and so he relents and tells Clay that maybe it is a good idea for him to go back to the Jalen Temple as it's clear that he does have a bigger destiny in place especially if they're off saving the world and so and so, with an, and so, as Clay and his dad embrace, embrace, and I think a hug, uh, there's a little funny scene where Jack asks Wuya why they don't have a relationship like that. Wuya tells him she, that she's not his mommy before telling him to pick up his toys, they're going home. And ultimately, the episode ends as the other Jalen monks get ready to fly back to the Jalen temple, and Obi finally manages to milk old Bessie before she once again kicks him in the face. So, there you go. That was Big as Texas, and... I think it's an enjoyable episode in, my, in that regard. Again, it's nice to see more character building for the Jalen monks, especially in the case of Clay. And I think this episode is a, is a good one for is a good character builder for Clay, as we have to see more of his <clears throat> as we get to see more of his family's dynamics. Hold on one second. <clears throat> Sorry about that, but yeah, like I said, this is a nice episode to help further showcase more about Clay's character and his background, especially in, especially with how his, especially with his relationship with his father. As I, as we've seen with Clay in previous episodes, he tends to be the more strong and stalwart member of the Jalen monks. He tends to always be on the back. He tends to be at lying in the back and watching and waiting. And he's to end. And despite his strength, he's also typically the smartest member of the group, as he's able to think of solutions that other people typically miss and so forth, which comes in handy when you're the strong and patient when you're strong and patient in the case however what i like about this episode is that this is the first time that we see some of clay's blind spots when he's not being influenced by bad writing in this case we get to see that apparently clay's family holds well familial pride in check it's not just about be it's not just about being a good warrior it's about essentially being a man and unfortunately with under Clay's father, Clay on Clay has kind of the wrong idea of what it's like to be a man. As his dad has what has his own idea of what a man should be, strong, tough, and ready to jump into action, while Clay is kind of the opposite. He's calm and quiet and tends to see things from the see things from a distance and ultimately formulate a plan. The only problem is that his dad seems to Papa Bailey seems to have imbued in Clay the idea that he needs to that he has to think the same way as him and as a result clay is constantly trying to earn his father's approval even though he does even though his father doesn't really believe he gets it or at least i think that's what's going on i'll explain why when i get near when i get near the end but in that regard it does feel like that clay is just constantly trying to strive for an ideal that sadly is just out of his reach because he and his dad are just two different people. Clay's dad, like I said, is just a big, burly, and just kind of your stereotypical root, rough and tumble cowboy. He has got a big mustache. He has a big hat. He has spurs and walks. He walk. He, he has the he has the little pointed legs out like this when he walks. It's just he's got the stereotypical accent that you'd expect from a Texan cowboy. It's just kind of, like he just kind of he just kind of fits his own little stereotype for a man. And while Clay does fall into some well. 
Clay does kind of fall into some of those stereotypes. As he's obviously big, strong, and he dresses the part of a cowboy. Clay is more soft-spoken. Clay is more friendly. Clay is definitely not as gruff as his father. As well, he can kick your ass if he wanted to. At the same time, he's the guy that would also that would also give that would also give you a shoulder to cry on if he thinks you needed it. And Clay's dad kind of feels like the kind of guy who would tell you to just to just kind of toughen up and deal with it. So at the same so in that regard, you can see the dissonance. But at the same time, Clay. Clay still clearly respects his father and is trying to earn his approval throughout the episode. As when his father tells him to jump, Clay pretty much just asks how high, as he does everything his father tells him to do, despite the fact that under other circumstances, he wouldn't do those things. Case in point, when the Xiaolin monks were trying to get the Orb of Tornami away from Jack, Omi did throw out an obviously competent plan. Just jump and surprise Jack and grab the Orb first chance they get, but... Ultimately, Clay's father said, "What? Why are we doing that? Just go out there and get it. Clay, go take care of it." And Clay did it. No questions asked. He just said, "Yes, sir," and went. So there's clearly some, so there's clearly so there's clearly some kind of high. So there's clearly some expectations that are being put on Clay by his father. And considering what we learn in later episodes, that kind of makes sense. As the idea is that Clay is supposed to is that based on how Papa Bailey talks about Clay and how he has to earn the Lone Star of Texas, there could be a bit of familial pride in there, telling Clay that he has to honor the family name. But Clay doesn't, but like I said, because he, Clay doesn't fit the typical stereotype that Papa Bailey wants him to fit, Clay probably feels inadequate, and thus, while all these expectations are being put on Clay, he constantly feels that maybe he doesn't know how to reach them. While he is confident enough in his abilities and does have his own code of honor, so to speak, when it comes down to Papa Bailey, he's always striving to reach a goal that he can never get to. And it's, in a way, kind of sad, but it also makes the ending more satisfying when he does stick to his guns and try solving the problem his way, and it ultimately works out, even with his dad breathing down his neck, telling him to do it in one way, and Clay says, fuck you, I'll do it mine. That's, again, it's pretty nice, and it does offer some little, but that's actually some good character growth, as well as acting, adding some background to Clay's story. Which, if I can, which... Honestly, though, to nitpick it a little, this, uh, um, I don't like how, I don't like how subdued Clay was when he finally told his dad to fuck off. Basically, what happened was, like I said, during the showdown, Clay finally told his dad to back off and let him do things his way. And, I'm gonna be honest here, Papa Bailey was kind of an annoying little shit throughout this episode. Like, like I said, because he's supposed to be so, because he wants to be so strong, intimidating, and full of presence, he's commanding of everything Clay does. Every little thing he tries dictating to Clay. And even when the Xiaolin monks come to his doorstep and tell him, by the way, that ancient, that family heirloom that you got on your neck is a powerful artifact that's gonna make you a target, he still says, whatever family pride. And I understand that that ultimately families do have to have a pride thing to them, but these people deal with this shit all the time. And yes, he doesn't understand Shen Gong Wu because he probably hasn't been around them, but he saw Jack Spicer cause a fucking flood using just an orb. I think maybe, just maybe, he can give him some leeway, especially when the other Xiaolin monks flew all the way to Texas on the back of a fucking dragon. I think maybe you can stretch your disbelief just a little bit, cowpoke, just a little bit. Bit, which I don't know why he really does not take. He really just kind of brushes off all the stuff with the Shen Gong Wu. Even for a man as tough as him, I feel like he should still be questioning, like, what the fuck is going on here? And admittedly, he is a little shocked. Like, when, like in the early in the episode when Dojo came out with the ancient scroll of the Shen Gong Wu, and of course it showed how the Orb of Tornami worked. He's like, wait, how'd you get that little cartoon fella to start moving? And like, and even or when he saw the Xiaolin show, it's like, Bessie, you've been remodeling, like. I don't know why. Those are very underplayed reactions, or at the very least, the, his reaction to the Xiaolin showdown was. I honestly think his reaction to the scroll is kind of a regular reaction. You'd be like, how'd you do that? But again, it just... I don't know why. I don't know why. About my point, my, I'm listening to my point here. My point is, the guy's been a stubborn asshole throughout the episode, and yet I feel like Clay's reaction to him would find... I feel like Clay's reaction to him finally telling him to shut the hell up it should have been a bigger explosion, in my opinion. I feel like Clay finally should have just hit his limit and told... 
And while I do, I should have just yelled at him and said, back the hell off. Maybe not using those exact language, because again, kids show. But at the very least, he could have at least raised his voice in my, beyond just say, he could have just raised his voice in my, literally what he said was, like, daddy, I love you, but if you don't, but if you don't kind, zip your yap and let me do things my way. It's just like, that's like the most, that's like the most polite way of saying someone, telling someone to shut up that I've ever heard. And I understand Clay, Clay respects and loves his dad, but the dude is fighting for the sake of the world, trying to get this mystical artifact away from the evil boy genius. I think, maybe, just maybe, Clay is allowed to be a little bit angrier, just a teeny tiny bit, you know, just saying. My point is, I feel like that could have been better, and again, for someone like Papa Bailey, I feel like it was warranted, which if I can give another thing to the episode, I don't know whether this is a complaint, I do, I'll, I'll, I'll actually give credit, going back to cult, the, that stuff I like about the episode and how Clay finally stands up on his own to his father, I kind of suspect that Papa Bailey was trying to get Clay to tell him to screw off. Again, I suspect, I, I don't have anything to confirm this, but there was, but... The thing is, throughout the episode, he was constantly micromanaging Clay and questioning him. Now, you could make the argument that it, that his that he was stuck in his ways and didn't want to see anything else beyond what he ha beyond what was right in front of him and how how things fit in his worldview. So maybe that was what was holding him back. But the thing is, when Clay finally told his dad to shut up and let him do things his way, Papa Bailey smirked. I think he wanted Clay to do that. I think the thing is, again, I could be wrong. I don't have a lot of evidence to support this, but I think part of the reason why Papa Bailey was pushing as much as he would is because he wanted Clay to tell him to, to, do, to tell, because he wanted Clay to lash out at him. Because the thing is, I'm guessing part of the reason why, what his, part of his definition for being a man is standing by your ideals, which... I actually agree with people have it to, people tend to stand by their ideals and how they want to do things and sometimes and that ultimately that also means that they can that they have to, that despite what someone else may tell them they have to at least stay, say and say no this is how I'm gonna do things now I admit that that can be detrimental depending on how you do things but part of the th the part of be part of growing up and essentially becoming a better person is trying to find a way that is trying to find something that works for yourself and not letting it be dictated by other people who tell you that they that you need to do it better unless you're working at a job in which case you roll over you roll over I, but my point here is this i feel i think what clay's father was trying to do was cuz he is that he probably didn't see that clay had the potential he just needed to have that little push. He needed Clay to see that he needed to stand by his own ideals and not let be dictated by someone else. And so how he wanted Clay to do that was by essentially just pushing him until Clay finally said, no, I'm not listening to you anymore. I'm doing things how I want to do them. And ultimate, and I think that that was what his ultimate lesson was. He was an unconventional lesson, but I feel like for a lesson like this, you don't just tell someone, hey, this is what I want you to do. He really just needed Clay to come to that realization himself. Now, by the end of the episode, you could argue that wasn't the case, especially since he said to, especially since he said to Clay, I feel like, I guess you've been ready far longer than I've been, than I've seen. But that it, all, that it could also be, be him just trying to save face and say, uh, yeah, I didn't expect you to do that, son. I'm mighty proud of you. So, I don't know. But I like, to, I like to think that Papa Bailey was genuinely trying to push Clay far enough until Clay said, stop it. Because that because then if he, Clay had the backbone to stand up to his dad, who he's been trying to kiss up to just to, get his, just to, be, just to hear his dad say, I'm proud of you, then I feel like that, then he thinks that probably Clay would be worthy. So... I at least do find that interesting, so I'll give you that. I, so in that regard, I do like that. I do like the where that episode, with how the episode handles all that. It's nice to see more of Clay's family and learning how the fa and learning more about his background. I like seeing this other side of Clay. I like seeing the arc with him as he tries to earn his debt father's approval before he finally says, "You know what? I don't need it. I'm going to do things my way." I like the stuff with his father, as in the, and I'll even admit in the ending when he does find when he does give the star Nobby to Clay is actually a pretty nice one. The showdown is, of course, pretty cool. The new Shingo movies seen in this episode are nice. The Orotonami is all right, in my opinion. It's just all right. Not really one of my favorites, but it's a but it's a but it's a all right Shengong Wu. I'm more a fan of the Star Nabi, even though it, which I, which I like, Fire's cool. Okay, sue me. Fire can be cool. So I'll say that. But overall, it's an enjoyable episode. Like I said. Good to see more with more of Clay. Good to see more of Clay's background. And while I do, and while I admit that there were some parts that I felt were a little, 
out there. Like I said, I feel like Clay's explosion could have been better, and I think the middle section where they were cattle rustling, Night Wheel was more just pure filler, and even the joke with Omi and Old Ben... And old Bessie did get old rather fast. On the whole, I do think it's an enjoyable episode. So, yeah, I think that's really all I have to say. I uh, thank you for watching. I'm Samuel Johnson, and I hope to see you next week as we see this as we see the Zhaolin Warriors tackle tackle a whole gang gaggle of Shen Gung Wu. So, until then, I hope you have a good day and take care. <laughs>